This week, we're taking a look at a surprising twist in how we try to save endangered species, especially when it comes to their genetics. We've all heard about efforts to protect animals on the brink of extinction. One common approach is to take a few individuals from a large, healthy population and move them into a smaller, struggling group. The idea is simple. More genes equals more strength, more diversity, and a better shot at survival. But new research suggests there's more to the story. Let's zoom in on a recent study involving the eastern Massasauga rattlesnake. Like many endangered species, small populations of these snakes have lost genetic diversity over time. So, scientists thought, why not move some snakes from a large, genetically diverse group into these smaller ones to rescue them? This method is called assisted gene flow, and it has actually worked well in some cases. But here's the catch. A study led by researchers at The Ohio State University showed that this strategy might not always bring the benefits we expect, and it might even come with hidden costs. Every living thing has a genome, a complete set of genetic instructions made up of genes. These genes carry small differences called mutations. Some mutations are helpful, allowing an animal to adapt to its environment. Others are harmful and can lead to disease or poor survival. In the study, researchers looked closely at the full genetic makeup of 152 Massasauga rattlesnakes from 14 locations. They focused on three small, isolated populations in Ohio and considered bringing in snakes from two larger, more genetically diverse populations. What they found was surprising. The snakes from the large populations did carry more of the helpful mutations, but they also carried a higher number of harmful ones. The scientists saw that donor snakes could increase the good mutations by 34%, but at the same time, those same snakes would also introduce a 36% rise in moderately harmful mutations and a 32% increase in very harmful mutations that can actually knock out important genes. We have a little bit of a paradox here. The genetic analysis says, genetic rescue is maybe not good, or at best, it's a wash, said H. Liesel Gibbs, professor of evolution, ecology, and organismal biology at The Ohio State University and senior author of the study. But when you look at other studies of assisted gene flow activity for other rare organisms, the small population usually grows. Genetics suggests even though rescue works by increasing the numbers of individuals in the first few generations by reducing inbreeding effects, it could be risky long term. And so, we should look more closely at other factors, especially ecological factors, that may allow the species breathing room for the evolutionary factors to work. The study determined that just because an animal comes from a diverse group doesn't mean all of its genes are helpful. Some might be quite the opposite. That said, there's another layer here. Genes don't work in isolation. The environment, the place where these animals live, matters a lot too. Sometimes just increasing the population size helps more than anything else. More animals mean more mating opportunities, better survival, and stronger future generations, even if there's some extra bad DNA in the mix. The researchers also looked to see how many adaptive genes from the donor snakes were specific to their original environment, and they found only about 7% of those helpful mutations were location-specific. That means there's probably a low risk of introducing genes that don't fit in the new area. Assisted gene flow is still a useful tool in conservation, but it's not a magic solution. Genetics is complex, and now, thanks to advanced genome sequencing and new statistical techniques, we can actually measure the risks and benefits before making these big decisions. This isn't just about snakes. The same approach can be used for other endangered species too, from plants and birds to mammals and insects. In the end, saving endangered species isn't just about boosting numbers, it's about making smart, informed decisions based on science. Don't stop here, find out more. Visit the links in the description below for more in-depth information on the stories presented in this video. Or if you are a part of a wildlife organization doing something interesting right now, let us know in the comments.